Hello everyone and welcome back to Straight White Whale. This is episode 20? This is number 20. Wow. 20 episodes. 20 episodes of absolute nonsense. This is the longest I've ever stuck to anything in my life. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> like, cause the last podcast I done, it was starting to like get massive and stuff, and then I was like, ah, fuck that. Rather just watch Netflix. How many episodes did you get into the last podcast? Ten or something. Right. Well, an 20. achievement. Twenty is an achievement, mate. So before we get into it, I just want to say thank you very much to McTassels this week's sponsor as you're aware if you're a regular listener you'll know that it's a greek food truck they've got a couple of trucks one is up at the fort another one's at kelvin way beautiful greek food that they giro stuff you can get lamb halloumi good family good celtic family good catholic celtic family i've just lost half the audience <laughs> um but I thank you very much to McTassels for sponsoring the podcast and your help is appreciated. So go and get a Giros. It'll be amazing. Be amazing, mate. I, I think it's amazing that you've managed to get as many fucking sponsors for as many episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Good salesman. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I just got to a point that they probably listen to it and they're like, that guy needs help. <laughs> Let's just sponsor him because he's fucked. No, mate, I'm sure that if they do listen to it, sh they've got to be delighted with the amount. Because, I mean, even in the last episode, you bring it in. Yeah. Any sort of opportunity, you're like talking about McTassels, so... Either they're like, he likes us a wee bit too much. <laughs> 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 Mate, see the amount of people that message me, man, like, it's amazing. They'd go up because they've, about heard, McTassels? they've heard us talking about that. No. Even the hair transplant one, they were like, fucking hell, man, I'm going to get that booked in. The only reason I'm wearing a hat today is because I'm not in jail. Looking sexy, mate. Yeah, is it coming in better? Aye, mate. It's all right, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's just fucking healed, by the way. That's fucking There's crazy, still man. Cuts there. Can you see it? Uh, nah. There was still like. Um, Can see a wee bit of redness. So I, I like just that's it. Just getting better, and I got it done in July, July the twenty seventh or something. Right. How long is it? Is it a year? Is it like a year process or what? Twenty two months. Twenty two months until it's like fully in. Yes. He said the guy was like, ah, it'll take twenty two months for it to be absolute perfect." So people come in and they're like, they just expect overnight results because mm -hmm. I think we live in that type of society. Instant gratification and all aye. that stuff. Um, but they need to wait 22 months to get their hair back. Aye, basically. Aye. And new minds is back. I feel very creamy on this podcast. Is it my eyesight or do I look white as fuck? I'm all right. Aye, that's the way you look, mate. It's just the light. See the light on your cheek. No. It's like a really shite version of PK Blinders, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like PK Blinders if one of them get washed up on a fucking beach. <laughs> Drowned. PK Blinders after the alcoholism. <laughs> Aye, PK Blinders with liver failure. So, how have you been, Paul, since last week? I've been good, mate. I've been good. I'm fucking knackered, mate. Um, my missus has had COVID this last... Well, she's out of isolation the day. But it's weird, man. Sleep in the same bed... Suck the same dicks, no, I'm kidding on. Um, <laughs> but uh, sleep in the same bed, stay in the same house, mate. I didn't catch it. Oh, no, I'll need to get a a, a test. Oh. Because I'm it. pumping your bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting that out. I'm so like, sorry. No, I'm kidding on, mate. Don't worry about that. It would only upset <laughs> Do me. Do you see my wee face light up there? Like... <laughs> it would only upset me if it was true, but it's not true. So it's I right. keep my tap on, but in my socks. And the lights off. Aye, and my, I have to wear my glasses because I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's a pity pump, but it's the same way McDassel's, mate. That's why everything's pity. Everything I get in my life is through pity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is she all right, though? What, in bed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding on. Um, <laughs> uh, she's fine, mate. Aye. Triple vaccinated. I'm on the vaccinations, but... Um, no, she's fine, mate. It's just been like a cold, like a maybe like a, a chesty cold or whatever. Yeah. Um, I did worry because the sort of two weeks before that, I had had shingles and like a chest infection, but I'd been taking daily lateral flows. They'd been come back as negative. 
you've been in a room with me, you've not caught it. I've had so many people come into this studio, none of them have caught it. So I don't think I had COVID. Yeah. Um, but the thing that the last 10 days, you don't even realise is that you need to do everything. Yeah. Like you realise just how much when you're in a couple that maybe even she does a wee bit more than me, but I've had to do or the shopping anytime. Like for instance, like woke up the other morning and the cats didn't have any cat food and it's just like, don't you me again to go Aye. to the fucking shops. Just all these wee things, they get in the way and they make you fucking shattered. So, but thankfully she's out of isolation today um, and I, we can get back to some sort of fucking normality, mate. Good. That's yeah. common, by the way. My cousin get COVID and his wife doesn't have it. Doesn't catch and it. And they've been sharing a bed. So I don't know the Have science. they been shagging my bird? What's that? Have they been shagging my bird? I've been shagging my cousin. <laughs> 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 and then I shagged your bird and it's horrible. I shagged the guy that owns a McTassel's truck. <laughs> I'm going to get cancelled. Peter McTassel. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, he comes for Poso. He's not even great. Mm. Uh, What's been going on with you about, mate? How have you been? I've been okay. I was expecting to announce a tour very soon, but I never realised the work that goes behind a stand-up tour. Mm. So I know I said that in the podcast last week that we'd get um, something announced soon, and we will, but they're just going through the process uh um, confirming dates 100% and doing all that stuff so I'll be quiet about it and then I'll announce it when it's uh, done but I, I've been alright no major um, things have happened within the last week I've been back to walking like long distances right? and it's been amazing man uh, I forget how good that was um, and how much it's changed as well because I used to walk during lockdown Mm. And it was like walking about on a like I am legend set, just uh -huh. nabbed about, about. And now it's just back to fucking school winds abusing you when Aye. you're walking about, mate. I had that happen yesterday. But um do you have any kind of like social anxiety? Have you noticed that since you're going back out for your walks that when you're you know, like you're saying, in lockdown you go for these walks and everything's very surreal and there's nobody about and you're kind of like, This is cool. Yeah. But now that there's people about do you find yourself getting a wee bit anxious or a wee yeah. bit nervous about it? I get anxious, especially I walk in, I walked a lot, I walk along the canal for Lamhill Stables to Kirky Stables. That's a big walk, mate. And then I walk for Kirky to my house. So it's probably, I don't even know how long it is. It's hours, do you know what I mean? It's like a free four hour walk. Right. How Easy. often have you been doing that? I mean, in the last week I've done it three times, but during lockdown I was, every day every single day yeah uh, just to occupy your mind do you ever thought about turning that walk into a slight jog do you know i was doing it i was doing it see years ago i was able to run for bishop briggs leisure drome to kirky and it was five Is that up the canal that uh, runs next to the leisure drome in bishop yep. right i and don't want to give too much away in case a mad scott squad fan puts his dick through my mom's letterbox you know <laughs> what i mean that's not that's not a a code word for mama's I'm not even going to finish oh, mate, that. Don't. I I'm don't. not going to finish that sentence. I was talking about my actual yeah, letterbox. The actual letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make that perfectly clear. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> the day after an International Women's Day, I know. How dare I? I know. Well, 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 we'll talk about that then. Maybe we can talk about an International Women's Day. But um, I, have you have you thought about going back? Then I, I mean, see the difference between D Day brisk walking. Well, yesterday I done a thousand calories, so the only reason I didn't run is because I just didn't want to run, but I used to be a regular runner right. and I think I'm probably going to add it soon. Because I'm, I'm an expert at the jog that's slower than my walk. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like when a football player's getting subbed off near the end of a game and they do that sort of wee... The, the sort of walk jog where power like, walk no like you're actually jogging but you're doing it slower than your natural walk aye um but i mate, that that's fucking amazing um do you get are you noticing any good benefits for doing like adding exercise into your routine i i feel amazing i feel like my skins get better my moods get better i'm going to the bathroom often uh i just feel a wee bit happier and i actually feel like my postures get better and stuff so 
See, I, I know the deal. It's like I was in a sauna in a steam room and there was this fucking idiot trying to give his advice. And I'm like, mate, I never asked you for advice. Mm. I'm just in to be quiet. Uh-huh. But I'm like, see if see if somebody said, right, you've got a f- uh, you're going to film something and it's in August. I could lose four stone. It's just I'm going through a process of I lived through a pandemic. I was training seven days a week with a fucking boxer. I put myself down to 1,800 calories a day, which is essentially starving myself, right? I don't know if I was starving myself. It was not healthy. And then I pressed the fuck it button. Then on top of stress and depression and all that, I'm like, do you know what? Fuck it. If I want to eat, I'm going to eat. And I have been like leaning towards it for comfort and the way a smoker would have a fag or an, an alcoholic would have a pint. I've been doing it with food, but no, recently I'm just like, I feel like I'm coming out of that. I'm coming out the cloud Aye. and I'm like, fuck it, man. I've put on a couple of stone. I can deal with it. I mean, somebody was telling me about fasting and in my head, I'm like, I was doing 46 hour fasts during, during lockdown. Mm-hmm. Like, I could outfast any cunt. Like, I know that it's probably a mental illness with me, but <laughs> I get, like, they talk to you like you're stupid. It's, Aye. I don't know. It's like, I don't like, I've tried to not do that. I mm-hmm. used to be bad for that, like, almost being preachy. Yeah. And being like, oh, you should do this. You should do that. And through, like, no, even just, I think through doing advanced training and therapy, you start to realize that. You actually can't convince people to change. Yeah. There is no convincing anybody. So, like, what you described there in the sauna, like, the guy sort of telling you what today is kind of like the internet. Like, everybody on the internet wants to tell people, or wants everybody to know that they're fit and healthy. Uh-huh. And then wants other people to adopt their modality for being fit and healthy. And you can't, it's... People always want to make their own mistakes, find their own way, because it's about self-esteem. So if yeah. you just copy and paste what somebody else just tells you to do, is there any self-esteem to get with that, other than like maybe discipline or, or whatever? But when you discover it for yourself, you really appreciate it way, way more. Yeah. No matter what that is, like you maybe get people go, oh, you shouldn't walk that far. You should go on and day. You could day, you could burn that thousand calories day in, fucking a 15 minute crossfit workout and you're like that's true but i don't want a 15 minute crossfit workout mate so shut the fuck up yeah. and just let me live my life the way that i want to fucking live it yeah plus i've got a spare couple of hours it gives me a chance to listen to some podcasts some audible books it gives me ideas for stand-up i'm thinking about the stand-up tour i'm thinking about getting a flat it's not just walking it's like it's a form of meditation for me i do have that addictive side though because i like to post on instagram purely mm-hmm. for accountability but i wouldn't say it's definitely no ocd but see if i do thirteen thousand steps i'm like i need to do thirteen thousand and one today and then tomorrow it's try and be better than aye. the day before and then it's genuinely like i'm a fat hog piece of shit if i don't do it like well hog piece of shit i would say that there's nothing wrong with try to push yourself every day to be better than yourself the day before but if the way that you're motivating yourself is by telling yourself you're a piece of shit i'd be like mm, hog piece of a shit big hog <laughs> <laughs> like sleeping in the garden i don't deserve a bed tonight <laughs> <laughs> but then that's maybe why when you fail you hit the fuck it button mate aye you know what i mean it's like that all or nothing into it like if i don't do that extra the day then it kind of takes away like you could do half of what you did yesterday and yeah. it's still an achievement mate because it's it's just about getting up and going at the end of that, the day that's true mate I'm, I'm definitely maturing as i'm getting older so what you need to do with your life is <laughs> Aye, <laughs> just drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've said this on the podcast. Uh, I went to see a therapist once years ago. No, a real therapist. It wasn't like you. It was some type of, I think it was a therapist's helper. There was right. a couple of people in the room, right? Oh, right. Okay. One was a real therapist. And would, would they being observed? Aye, right, so, I think so. Right, okay. So being like a trainee or whatever? I think so. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I can't sleep. I'm muttering to myself when I'm at the dinner table with stress. I really, I 
I don't want to live anymore because mm-hmm. I can't sleep. See, when you take away sleep, you lose your fucking mind. For sure, mate. And she was like, why don't you have a nice glass of warm milk? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what Disney movie do you, did you come out of? Your, just a glass of milk will put you straight to sleep. Like, I, I don't know if that's true. Are you going to put fucking Valium in it for me? <laughs> I want fucking Scooby Doo's. It's like uh, Michael Jackson's milk. What was that, a fentanyl? <laughs> like, <give me> a <laughs> <wee>. <laughs> ah, you're like, that's not even white, you cunt. <laughs> milky. I need a wee bit of milky just but to get off to sleep. I also had a therapist years ago. I'm not slagging her because it really helped me. But see, when I was a young guy, she was like, what do you do for stress? And I was like, well, when I feel stressed or sad, I like to go to the steam room. Back in the day, it was steam room with fucking sweatsuits on and stuff. And I was like, what do you do for stress? And she's like, oh, just take the horse out. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> That's why you're not depressed. You've this got, is why we're different. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're different in life. She's got a field with a horse. Uh, yeah. I've got an okay fucking family. <laughs> anyway. How did the therapy help you? That she did? Do you think that look? Did, does it look like it's helped <laughs> you? just you? said it no, fucking helped you. It did help me, mate. 100% it helped me. And it, you don't realise that... I know it's so cliched and cheesy, right? But see when they say your body's like a car and you need to feel it with good things for good things to happen. Mm-hmm you might go through bad periods of time in your life like say for instance i went to an aa meeting when i was 24 that was my first aa meeting and i walked in and i done that i'm too young i'm not an alcoholic and it's no for me little did i know that that planted the seed and it wasn't until four years later that i went back and when i went back i thought if i never went to that meeting when i was 24 i probably wouldn't be here Uh and that's similar to therapy living through lockdown and like losing my hair with stress putting on weight and losing hunters of weight as well and i thought if i if i've not been through therapy before i know that i wouldn't be out the other side like that shit's helped me Mm -hmm. even though it's kept depression has came and gone again but i just look at it as like your body is a machine your mind's a machine sometimes you're going to be fucked and sometimes you're no you can do things like exercise eat healthy and take vitamins and stuff but then you get people that are actually chemically fucked as well so Mm -hmm. i don't think i'm chemically fucked i think i'm just a hypersensitive person that gets affected by my surroundings but i'm also like Who's not going to be fucked living through a lockdown? That's I'm it, a mate. human being, mate. Hundred percent. Like they, they reckon the modern scientific sort of numbers that come out, they reckon that chemically fucked, like the chemical imbalance is like eight percent. Yeah. A depression, and ninety two percent of it is situational. Yeah. Sort of adverse childhood experiences, trauma on a spectrum of like you know low level trauma to high level trauma, and. I we're human beings, mate. Like yeah. we, we are. Like we things that happen to us impact us, and if we can develop ways to unpack that and sort of realize the truth of the situation, you know what I mean? Like it goes a long, long way. And you're right. Sometimes people say stuff to you, you're not ready to hear it. Yeah. And then it takes years, and you're like, "Fuck! I really realized what that guy was trying to say to me, and it has that actual emotional impact." Yeah. Um. This is what kind of fucks me off about instagram and people J- you just need to do this get up get going and it's like so much truth in what people are saying but it doesn't help people that you just shout it at them yeah and tell them that it's your fault you feel the way that you feel you need somebody to be like sort of almost baby you through that you uh-huh. know what i mean like a parent would like look it's all right that you're where you're yeah let's have a look at it you know global pandemic a lot of stress like especially for people like you mate like when the pandemic hit i worked for virgin yeah i get i, I get i get told don't worry about it you're gonna get paid your money I, I was pure this is a fucking life man sitting with my bird all day fucking smoking weed watching fucking blah 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 but for somebody like you like i work with gary folds somebody like him the exact same industry like that everything went away yeah how are you supposed to cope with that how are you supposed to be happy instantly gone and on top of this was a goal that I had since I was 18 years old. I come, Gary Folds is the same and all, by the way. I'm not talking for Gary, right? But we come from working class backgrounds. I would imagine nobody in his family has done acting or stand up, mm-hmm. similar to my family. 
see when you do acting or stand up get a trade do this so see p before the pandemic you're surrounded with negativity get a real job you're not going to get paid how come you're not like kevin bridges people don't realize that being like kevin bridges is like one in the lottery it's a billion to one i mean do you know what i mean what who was there before kevin bridges like realistically who was there billy conley and billy conley's about fucking 95 mm -hmm. so there's no a, a lot of people in scotland that are at that level so you know you're you're surrounded with this get a trade get a job and then you actually become self-employed and then you're actually earning money mm -hmm. and you're like fuck i'm i'm living my dream i'm doing this you're, you're not living your dream as in your frankie boyle or kevin bridges level but that was never the goal for me i want to pay the bills i want to earn a living it's like i think i've said this before it's like being a professional football player right you play for Aberdeen, Kilmarnock, Hibs. You've played 800 fucking professional games in your whole life. You get paid two grand a week and then some cunt does that. I bet you never played for Rangers. And you're like, and what? I've got a house. I've got a wife. I've looked after my wains. Aye. I'm mortgage free and I'm no fucking 40. I, obviously, I'm no mortgage free. I'm talking about like football players. Uh -huh. So they're classed as like failures. And you're like, wait a minute, I've worked as a professional football player for 15 seasons mm -hmm. and i'm retired when i'm 36 that's so that's what it was like for me with stand up so you finally feel like fuck man when i put a show on and i've got 100 seats and i'm selling out this 100 seats it's an amazing thing then you've got an agent and then all of a sudden covid comes wipes half the fucking world out like job wise as well everybody's fucked and then all these cunts that are surrounded with you saying that you should have get a trade do that you should get a real job aye you're like nah this is a fucking real job as aye, well by for the sure, way mate. for sure this is mate this is i would say to people right i've i've I recently became self-employed not doing the same sort of thing as what you're doing right i'm no on a stage but it's still a creative industry that I'm involved in, like producing podcasts and doing therapy at the same time. So if COVID hit right now, I'd be fucked. Yeah. But I would say to people, like I get so many people that will be like, oh, you're so lucky. And, and I'm, right? I don't doubt that. But I have worked harder this last year than I have in my entire life. It's been more gratifying. Um, it's been more purposeful. I kind of feel like... When I get up in the morning, every, everything becomes a job at the end of the day. And there is a part of your mind that's kind of like, I would rather just sit about and do fuck all. But I don't yeah. think you can ever get rid of that. There is just always like a fucking lazy bastard that's just pure. Aye. Let's just seek comfort today. You push through it. You feel good about yourself. That's great. But see the work that goes into it. It's, I mean, I'm up at seven in the morning and I, I sometimes don't finish to fucking, I mean, if I'm on a Friday and a Saturday night, sometimes I'm coming back for doing live shows at like fucking three in the morning. I've done like a fucking 15, 16, 17, 18 hour shift. Aye. And I never did that when I worked for a company. Yeah. And it's, I, the reward that I get is all mine and everything comes out the other side. But people think that sitting, or you just sit about and you date, and it's like, no man, this is a fucking graft. It's just Aye. a different type of graft. It's a different type of graft. Wave goodbye to holidays, sick days, all that type of shit. For instance, say I get a gig in Aberdeen, right? Which has been a while, but say they would say, it's 80, I said this to my pal it's once. It's going to happen soon, but mate. Well, I for the tour, I. But my pal would be like, when I was gigging in Aberdeen, he's like, how much do you get? And I think it was like 70 quid. And he's like, that fucking hell, man, 70 quid for 20 minutes. That's amazing. That's fucking easy. And I'm like, well, look at it from my point of view. I've been doing it since I, I done my first gig when I was 18. I started doing it all the time when I was 24. It took me two years before I get paid. The first time I get paid was a fiver in Smash. The second time I get paid was a £10 check. Now, for me to get that 70, 80 pound, I need to write 20 minutes of material. I'm headlining as well. So I need to be the best on the bill. If I go up to Aberdeen and die in my arse and they shite, I'll never get asked back, right? Mm -hmm. That's a fact. I'll never get asked back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're weighing up your pros and your cons. Plus, you, if you're driving for Glasgow, uh, you need to chip in petrol money. You're paying for your food. 
and what you said, mate, you're getting back in the house at, you're leaving Glasgow at 2pm, you're getting back at 3am, you also need to gig and eat and all that, so what you, it's not really fucking That's 70, it, mate. 80 quid, mate. That's it, and also, I mean, I did this for free for yeah. the first six months that I did it, just to build a portfolio, yeah. people don't see that. They just be like, oh, it's, it must be so good. Like, if I want a day off, I can text four or five people and be like, oh, I'm not well. Yeah. And it, but you're like a one-man army. Aye. Like, if you fail, you fail. Yeah. There's no safety net when you're self-employed. And, I mean, I can, I can totally understand why y you had a, you had, you know, what would be said, like a mental health episode, a stress episode or whatever during yeah. COVID, man. Like, you, you always talk about uh, when we first started doing a podcast, like, your whole thing was you were so close to buying a house and it's like overnight that dream dies yeah and how do you quantify that in your mind do you know what i mean that i'm out there and i'm a success i'm on tv i'm doing stand up i'm loving my dream and then it's just like gone gone and it and at that point you're thinking well this come back yeah and luckily it is you know what i mean like yeah. thank god because ge genuine like let's be genuine there was a time during covid when you were like Live, I mean, I, I thought live gigs in Scotland were dead. Oh, for real, like hand to my heart, I was like, Scottish comedy in this country is gone. Like there might be Kevin Bridges at the Hydro when there's like massive COVID stuff and restrictions, but small circuit gigs are away. I, I, that was a possibility, when especially when you're watching uh, Zoom stuff. And you're like, God, this is rough, man. Mm -hmm. This I is rough as fuck. They could just live stream comedy. Aye, and I mean, it was shit. Did you watch any of that? I done one. Did I done you? one. Aye. What did you do? Uh, was that a Zoom one? <laughs> <laughs> do, do tell. <laughs> right, I don't want to slag them because it's an amazing comedy club, but it was a stand comedy club, right? Was it the one that they did on YouTube? Yeah. That they streamed live on YouTube? Yep. I, I was watching that, mate. I mean, I'll, before you tell your story... It wasn't great, uh -huh. but I think like it, it was something, you know, like at that point, right back at the start of the, the pandemic, you were yeah. like, it's something to take your mind away from it, you know Served what I mean? Served a purpose. Aye, for sure, mate. But like, tell me what it was like, because I watched a couple of them and I was thinking, oh, this must be horrible to be the performers. Well, I never done a gig in two years and then they offered me a gig and I felt like saying, you've put me on first as an opener. There was another comedian on the bill that's done that gig, the Zoom gig, five or six times. And I wanted to say, look, I'm really nervous. Could you put him on first and then me in the middle just to see and get a feel of the room? Uh -huh. So that was my fault. I should have said that. So I went there. I was first on. I walk in. A camera crew. There's a couple of staff members for Edinburgh there. Uh, set up a camera and they just said see that red light on top of the camera right there that's your audience uh one two three that's you on and I'm where were you in the stand comedy club oh you were in the comedy on club? the stage in front of nobody so what was it like to perform and no get that feedback because surely that's why like i know for being in bands the reason that you got on that stage really is for the applause yeah you know you're like you're like eating up you're wanting it like you're wanting the the that reaction that you know what i mean so what was it like it was awful it was just awful because like see when you do something so often and you're so used to it you're like fuck it i'll go up and wing it even sometimes in front of crowds but to be at the game for so long and then to go up and you you've not got a crowd i feed off crowds i improv off crowds I invite the heckles. Right. That's my shit. Right, do a lot of crowd work. I, like, that's my shit. Like, Excuse me. that's just my style. Mm -hmm. Because Scott Squad's improved and, you know, I'm inspired with people like Raymond Mearns, who's really similar. Well, no similar. I'm similar to him. I right. think I'm not comparing myself to him because he's a fucking genius, but I look at people like that and I admire him. Mm -hmm. So to go up there and you're just like getting nothing and uh, I also cut out so i think i get 10 minutes and the first four minutes cut out there was something wrong with the camera and i never knew that 
So everybody watching it was just like, we missed the first fucking five minutes and I'm doing callbacks to jokes that they couldn't see. And oh. I never knew that, but because you don't see the Facebook feed. And so I got off stage and I just done that. I am not doing that again. I'm just waiting until it gets back. I'm not that desperate. Uh-huh. Um, I've I seen a couple of them where people sent in pre-recorded yeah. material. And as you're sort of talking, I can kind of understand why they've done that. Because I was like, this is shite. I think Frankie Boyle did it, where it was like the whole thing. Saturday night, Frankie Boyle's live at the stand comedy stream on YouTube. You're buzzing for it. And I think he just sent in a wee video of himself reading a poem. He's like, which was kind of like, that was horrible. It was kind of... <laughs> Get a fucking death rattled in the mic there. We need to explain to the punters what happened. Paul just burped. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounded like there was a fucking demon in the studio there. <laughs> Frankie Boyle there. Like, like, he, he, pure, he pure trolled it. Like, he fucking read like a pure serious sort of poem. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, man, that's shite. But also, kind of understand, man. It would be like... I did a couple of corporate... They were only corporate gigs. Um, in the music industry... To explain to people, just in case you don't know, um, you'll do shit like you'll go and play in front of a panel, and it'll be like a representative for this record company, that record company, wow. like Billy Sloan will be there, you know, like there'll be like 10, 15 folk there sitting at a table. Basically, like an X Factor audition. You walk on stage, you get your awe, and you get nothing like tumbleweed. And it's the most disconcerting, like, thing that you could ever experience in your life because you're just, like, <laughs> you get no reaction. Yeah. And that's what, that, like you said, that's what feeds you. You have, like, the reaction. All the good gigs, you get the positive reactions or you get the heckles that you're looking for. So, wow, mate. I, I mean, I don't think that's sustainable. I don't, no. You know what I mean? They couldn't do that. Plus, you think, see, when you're living in a lockdown... Your, your body's in lockdown, your mind's in lockdown because you're getting the stimulus. You're just surviving. You're in survival mode mm -hmm. for two years. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was training seven days a week, so a lot of that anxiety was getting sweated at me. But mm. to go on a stage and feel that performance anxiety and nerves, I felt like I get hit with a fucking bus. Because you've got bankers. I've got stuff that I've been... I've got jokes in the back that I've been that are 10 year old and i know if i'm struggling i could do that Aye. i'll rarely ever do it but it's there i've got like three or four hours of material in my mind and That's when a I, lot, man. Fucking I, hell. but when i went up on stage and you're doing that for the first time in two years i was forgetting my bankers like uh, it's like right. forgetting what day it is you're just like what day is it what's my name again i can't even remember my name that's what it feels like it was just a weird... I like in panic mode. A weird feeling, man. Mm. Anyway, the podcast is sponsored by McTassels. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself up to Kelvin Way for a Giros. Or the four... Ange Postacoglu might be up there. <laughs> Not the Buchanan Galleries, but remember that. Aye, they've been shut down for fucking six months. Sorry. I've not even had a chance to look at my notes, mate. Well, that's good, mate. Let's let's have a swatch. What t how long have we done? Half an hour, mate. Half an hour? Yeah, about halfway. That's all right. Um, I've liked what we've done so far, mate. I've enjoyed that as well. Nice, nice honest conversation. Very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Imagine if it wasn't a recording. I have done that before, mate. Have you? Hi, mate. One time where uh, I go 40 minutes into a podcast <laughs> with Stephen Purden. <laughs> And had me press record. Oh no! Um, and one time it, it happens, mate. Like, see if you, you have been. I've produced probably over a thousand episodes of podcasts. Like, it's going to happen. Like, I've been involved in one. Who's the guy that does the football show with? You know, Chris Toll. He does the football daft, daft with daft. Stephen and Gredo, and then there's Toll. Toe is in the ICW. I I know I know I know. It, does does he do the podcast with them? Aye. He produces it or he's on it. He's on it. Oh, the guy with the glasses. Yes. Oh, what's his name? He does go radio and all that as well, doesn't he? No, no. Like, Actual Chris Toe. His name is. Oh, you no. I, aye. I, are you saying you did one with Chris Toe? I did oh, uh, aye, with I Chris Toe. It was his movie podcast oh, right. during. Aye, I know who uh, Chris Toe is, mate. Aye, aye, aye. During lockdown, I did it. Right. Okay. And we did about half an hour before we realised it wasn't recording. Was it on Zoom? Uh, it was on Zoom. Aye. Right, and and then, uh, then we did about three years. 
but see the last hour I was like visibly like what the fuck mate why am I doing a three hour <laughs> podcast I can't even did hide they, did they put it out he put it out, aye. Did he they put the I full three hours? Three hours, it, man. Fuck's sake, he, man. I couldn't even hide the fact that I was like, mate, come on to fuck. Like, I'm hungry, I've not had my dinner and all that. <laughs> and he's like, no, we'll just do a wee bit more. But, aye, he's a good lad. I lost my way there. I didn't even know what I was going to talk about. As again, like, um, a lot of people have been getting in touch. It's went mental recently. I know, man. A newspaper done a fucking story in this podcast last week. That video that we've put up on... Uh, TikTok is at 50,000 views now. The one about uh, Duransky? Yes. It's a crack on me. Enjoy no, it. no, the the other one. Uh, what was the other one? I can't remember. The first one. I can't remember. The Daft Punk wank. <laughs> nice. So the Duransky ones get like 5,000. Right. But I, so many people are getting in touch and saying like they're appreciating it. So if anybody's listening to this, what I would like to ask you to do is can you subscribe, can you like, and can you rate? Any podcast I listen to, everybody asks that. It's took me 20 podcasts to ask you. Please, please like it. It does help, but mate, because it, it, um, it, it, if you're getting loads of ratings, Apple will look at it, Spotify will look at it, and if it's something that the, they want to put on like the recommended feed and stuff like that, Hi. so doing stuff like that helps. Can you rate it for me on your phone? I know that's kind of cheating. I'll do it right now. I've also rated my own podcast. Nothing wrong with that, mate. I've got my dad to do it and all that. It's like fucking stupid cunt, doesn't it? You should even... just fire it out on social media, mate. Put it on your Twitter and on your Facebook. Just go, listen, guys, could you just go into your Spotify app or into your Apple podcast app and just give us a wee rating? Ah. Five stars if, you know what I mean? Um, all right. That, that sounds much easier than me individually going through all my mates' phones <laughs> saying, rate my podcast. I just fire it on your <laughs> socials, mate. Um, oh, mate, you've got 24 five-star ratings on uh, on Spotify. Oh, really? 25 now. Wow. That's good, mate. That's that's really good. One's me. One's my dad. One's me. <laughs> 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 fucking brilliant what have you got in your your paper uh the notes um i went to see the new batman um this has been a sticking point in my girlfriend's covid i'm like bitch get fucking well because i want to go and see fucking batman <laughs> <laughs> is that bad no fucking selfish bastard three hours it's on for did you know that is it three hours long mate as long as your podcast with Chris Toll. Aye. Was it as boring? It was just a shite. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I love? It takes a... I love film, right? Especially horror and sci-fi. That's my shit. But I went to see the new Batman and I was really disappointed in it. I, I was kind of really? shocked, mate. I was shocked at how shite it was. Why? Oh, no. Um... I'm not going to give you any spoilers, um, I'm not going to give you any of the story. The reviews that I've read has been all great. Maybe it was just the mood that I was in. Are you one of these people that if everybody likes something, you automatically don't like it? I think so. <laughs> I pick me. Kind of like that. <laughs> I'll have your pick me. I, I'd rather watch a Danish horror film that's in fucking subtitles <laughs> than like PK Blinders. <laughs> I, I mean, as soon as everybody jumps on something, you're like, ah, nah, no for me. Well, I, I am like that to a certain extent, but, but like, look at Christopher Nolan, Batman. I think the three of them are one of the, they're the best franchise out. So it's not like Is that your I'm, favorite, is Christian Bale your favourite Batman? I think so. Right. But this one was just really strange. It was just strange. I think they're going for the realistic kind of thing with it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really like a superhero thing. It was, it was actually quite, Quite gritty. Gritty, it? right. Uh -huh. uh, the penguins in it, right? Nice. And I just couldn't help but think that the the guy who plays the penguin is the fucking double of Robert De Niro, right? Have you seen? Right. Uh, Let me check this guy out. Keep while well, you're while well, you're talking. Have you seen Frankenstein with Robert De Niro? When Robert uh, Mary Shelby's Frankenstein, uh -huh. Aye. when Robert De Niro plays Frankenstein's monster, uh -huh. this is what the penguin looks like. He looks like Robert De Niro playing Frankenstein, and I couldn't get that out of my head. Right, okay. Maybe I was out my nut, but 
I don't know fucking... Is Colin Farrell? Is it fuck? It is. Is that Colin Farrell? Col- Colin Farrell, Oz slash the Penguin. No fucking way, man. I did not know that. Right, let me go and look at photos. Um, I was wondering why he was everywhere. To be perfectly honest, he's been kicking about everywhere. I was wondering what's going on, but he's obviously... Um, fuck, I never knew that, man. He was the Penguin. Colin Farrell, Penguin. Let's have a look at this. Out. No way, man. No fucking way. I no wonder. No wonder you didn't fucking figure that one out. But he doesn't look like the penguin, just looks like a dude with a scar on his face. Do you think he looks like Robert De Niro? He looks like Robert De Niro as uh, Frankenstein, for sure. <laughs> um is uh how what's your feelings about uh the Michael Keaton Batman, the Tim Burton Batman series? <sighs> I've, I'll need to watch it again because I've not watched it in years. But from what I remember, I thought it was very cheesy. The closest thing to a comic book that you'd probably mm. see. It was enjoyable. I like Michael Keaton. Uh, Danny DeVito as a penguin was amazing. Aye, uh, Batman Returns. Yeah. Um, what about the uh, Jack Nicholson Joker? <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed that. Right. I, I, really, that movie, I really enjoyed it. I thought the Batmobile was good. I thought he was a good Batman. I thought he was a good Bruce Wayne. Uh-huh. Um, it was quite dark. There was like a sort of, I don't know, everything had like fog. Mm-hmm. Every time you seen the streets of Gotham, there was like steam coming out of the fucking... <laughs> See, when I was a wee guy and I seen Jack Nicholson get the the fucking surgery, uh-huh. that freaked me Aye, out. Me too, mate. So I'll need to go back and watch that again. But I've, personally, I think Christian Bale's Batman's the best. Uh, I loved that. Mm-hmm. All well, three of them. I, well, I loved Batman Begins. I remember got to see Batman Begins um, in the cinema and being like, holy shit, because that's it's dark. Like it, you, you know what I mean? It's quite violent. Yeah. Um, it's no like the Val Kilmer or the George Clooney monstrosities <laughs> like Batman and Robin and Batman Returns. But um I actually forgot George Clooney was Batman. That is mental. Oh, mate, wow. How shite are they movies? Aye, they're pretty shite. Who is it that did them? I was going to say Michael Schumacher, but he's a Formula <laughs> One race car driver, but definitely <laughs> something Schumacher. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, can't remember. It was I. The guy that wrote and directed them was like, is it Joel? Joel Schumacher or something like that? <laughs> but um, Batman Begins, I really loved. I thought... Um, What's the second one? Dark Knight Rises? Is that the third one? Okay. One of them's a Dark Knight, one of them's a Dark Knight Rises, but I think I think the second one, the one way uh No Christian Bale, he's fucking Tom Hardy. No. The Joker. Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. I thought that was a masterpiece, mate. Yeah. Like went and seen that in the movies, obviously at the hype because Heath Ledger had fucking died and there was a whole load of like attention on it. But I genuinely thought that the third one was so bad. Like, yeah. I had Tom Hardy's voice uh, in the pure, I, I was in the darkness. It's like, it, it's like a parody. Aye. You know what I mean? I didn't enjoy it. And I thought that he was actually quite a shite bad guy. Yeah. And a lot of people, <clears throat> he gets slaughtered for that quite a lot. A lot of films that Tom Hardy does, he's either wearing a mask or he's doing a stupid fucking voice mm. and that i remember seeing that in the cinema and i thought i can't really make him out i remember seeing it in the imax and thinking like i can't I, what is he saying and then I, I watched it on whatever like probably a rip and was yeah. like i can finally fucking hear what he was trying to say yeah. it was just all muffled <laughs> Then real. you get all these guns cutting about with fucking bane masks on. Remember that for a oh, year? Mate. Aye, mate. Trying to look like him in the gym. Uh, you're not going to get that in the gym. It's called steroids. Aye, mate. Uh, fucking for sure, man. To get that size, man. His neck was like fucking the size of my waist. Aye. Tom Hardy's one of the guys that I've got so much respect for. And Christian Bale as well. See, anybody that goes up and down like that, the way that they did for roles, like mm-hmm. I suppose Hugh Jackman is a similar. Like Hugh Jackman walks about a normal dude. Yeah. And turns himself into a fucking monster to play Wolverine. It yeah. must take so much dedication. But it's funny when you look back. I mean, what did Michael Keaton do? <laughs> Just wear a Batman mask. <laughs> Put on a rubber suit. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> <Fee> Tam Shepherds. Aye, <laughs> 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 oh. but. Uh... So you didn't enjoy Robert. Did you enjoy Robert Pattinson as Batman? 
I don't think so. No. And I enjoy him as an actor, though. He's a good actor. No. He's been in some good shit recently. Uh, no, the vampire stuff. I realize Twilight. A gig's a gig, but uh, especially when you're getting like a hundred mil, a fucking I, <laughs> a movie. Um. So what type of Batman was he? What he was seemed he? like a mad emo goth bully victim, to be honest. Right. I was expecting him to pull out a skateboard at one point and fucking do all that shit. I'm like, come on, mate. You look like you hang about the cat house. Did he get jacked? No, really. No? No. Nah. Maybe tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, aye. The new Batman was shite. Uh, what else? Russia has cancelled McDonald's. <laughs> no, no, no. McDonald's have cancelled Russia. Has cancelled Russia. They've stopped selling McDonald's in Russia mm-hmm. because of Ukraine. And everybody's like, um, that's going to help Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the outcome of these uh, sanctions and all these businesses taking the moral high ground in Russia is, is that the Russian people are healthier than they've, ever, than, than they've ever been before, than they've ever experienced before. Hi, I'm like, is McDonald's on their side? That's what makes me think. Mm-hmm. But do you reckon to us, like, uh, Russian TV shows getting taken down after all the online platforms, them, uh, like uh, businesses being like, we're not sending any more products to Russia. I think they've announced that nobody's going to be buying oil, gas, or coal off of Russia. Like, what do you think about this? So, I think when it comes to like taking down music and films, there was a restaurant that took a Russian dish off the menu. <laughs> That's ridiculous, I think mate. I think it's racism. I don't know if racism is the word. Um, what would it be? Xena. Ah, uh, xenophobia. Yeah. I think it's that. Right. And I don't agree with it. Oh, it's like cancel culture gone mental. Yeah. They think that, I mean, I think that, you know, taking maybe like their, their businesses off of the stock exchange and I think like, right, okay, sanction them because their leadership's at war. We need to do something. Yeah. But, Taking fucking Russian music off of Spotify. Taking, I mean, Twitch have stopped uh, paying out to Russian Twitch streamers. You're punishing. I mean, what difference is that going to fucking make? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, maybe it's a bad example, but it's like somebody punishing you because uh, Britain's at war. Well, that's exactly what's happening. And you're like, what? They can't. They've stopped them taking uh, the Russian people taking cash out of cash machines. Yeah. I don't agree with it. I mate. don't agree with it either. And it's know. getting really weird and it is like a cancel culture. Did you see yesterday that um feminists from a organization um tweeted a video in support of Ukraine and it was beside the Eiffel Tower and they were all topless and they had the Ukraine I did flag see it, right. I over seen a photo their, of this. their bare chests mm-hmm. and I think it was feminism for Ukraine or something or against Russia something like that and I quote tweeted it and I said I'm going to get my cock out in Springburn Park for <laughs> for Ukraine uh-huh. and it was quite terrifying the response they got from men by the way quite a lot of guys thought I was being serious which I just find mind numbing right so what was the response like so a couple of people were like don't do that another guy was like you'll get the jail (laughs) and i'm like (laughs) as if i'm gonna get my dick it and then um a lot of guys were responding quite disrespectful as in some set of tits on her or they're all flat chested or ugly Mm, and stuff so You've got all these fucking idiots that think I'm being serious. Then all these assholes that are being disrespectful towards women. But then, which they're cunts, right? But I'm also like, why? I I, I dislike both sides. I don't like the guys and I don't like the women getting their tits out because I don't see how that can be beneficial to anybody. Uh-huh. We're, we're living in a sort of world of performative activism. Yeah. Where 
we we do these things uh to get attention and yeah. it's like the the whole world's attention is on ukraine you guys going and painting a ukrainian flag colors on your bare chest is making zero difference to this yeah it's even like i have i've decided to not comment on this mate like it's the realization that i'm a fucking idiot for glasgow yeah like i people don't need to hear my opinion on the russian ukrainian conflict now if we were talking about it in a podcast or like you know i would talk about it i've got my opinions yeah they're the same as everybody else's the russians the russian leadership are bad and it's shite what they're doing to the ukrainian people but there seems to be this development in the world where we want we feel like our voices need to be heard yeah that people are coming out and being like solidarity with ukraine it's like we don't i don't care mate like you're a joiner for park kid <laughs> Aye. Aye. I get I get it at the same time. I'm not being a dick about it. I'm not being like pure shut the fuck up or anything, but it's people have real anxiety. You know, like, oh, would I post? Yeah. Post nothing. Like, we don't need it. What we need is for the authorities to go in and sort this shit in Ukraine and fucking you know what I mean? The real thing that needs to be done isn't being done. Yeah. So people around the world putting Ukrainian flags on their profile pictures on Twitter is making no fucking difference yeah. to us. Like there's a wee Ukrainian granny lying under the rubble of a blown up motorway right now, gasping for life. And she's like, Thank God Davy Fe Park Kid has got a Ukraine flag on his Facebook page. Cheers, Davy. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Davy. <laughs> Cheers, Davy boy. G day homers, mate. That's made a real that's made a real difference. I mean I used to buy aye. speed off you, Davy. Can you <laughs> shut up? <laughs> Davy's been channeling good good energy towards Ukraine while he's doing his cold water therapy. Mate, you took the fucking words right out my mouth. <laughs> it's Putin never tried to get cold water therapy. Get him up to the camp, she's man, it'll fucking sort him right out. <laughs> See if Putin did cold water therapy, there wouldn't be a war right now. Shut it, you fucking idiot. Oh mate, but I mean, aye, it's we need we need the real shit to happen. This is like it seems to be now that we're like I said, we're doing this performative. It's like clapping for the NHS, right? Yeah. Like the government, the people that are in charge who could make a real fucking difference with pay rises, conditions of work, getting them proper PPE at the time. We're encouraging people to go out and do a round of applause at 8 p.m. on a Thursday night. What fucking difference? Show your appreciation for the NHS. I think it makes people feel like they're doing something. Yeah. But you're not doing anything. Like you need to put that anxiety and that drive to do something, to doing something that will really have a fucking impact like putting pressure on your fucking mp to yeah. vote the right way when the next fucking pay rise comes up no going out and being like bravo guys bravo i mean i mean it might in that moment make your your person across the road that works in the hospital feel good oh they really see me and they appreciate me but see long term they'll end up resenting it they'll be yeah. like well when you're voting tory again next time or when you're voting for brexit or when you're voting for fucking whatever and they're not getting the conditions and improved. They're going to look at your your wee performance and go out and gain a clap as an actual yeah. fucking slap in the face. Yeah. Just the same as if you come out of a Ukrainian war zone and trek halfway across Europe and find sanctuary in France and see some fucking idiots with their tits out with your flag painted on it, you're going to be like, what? Yeah. Well, maybe no. Maybe you'll enjoy it. Maybe we're just out of touch, mate. <laughs> no, because like I, I'm all about equality. Obviously, I'm about equality, but I'm like, if that was a bunch of men doing that, I'd feel very uncomfortable. And I feel uncomfortable with the fact that women are doing it as well. I mean, if I'm walking through a park and somebody's, a guy's got his top off and he's doing some type of stuff like that, I'd be like, get your top on, mate. And I uh, feel the same. I, I, I feel the same with women. I, I Essentially, really it boils down to the end of the day. I don't really care. I'm just talking uh -huh. about it for content for the podcast. Uh, I, mean, I don't give a fuck. I don't really. I don't really care about it in that way. I more care about like put your effort somewhere else. You've clearly put some effort into setting up a photo shoot and yeah. getting some paint. Like, why don't you just go and? There's plenty of places that are gathering, uh, like nappies and sanitary products and food to send to Ukraine. Go and yeah. do that. There's a real thing that you can That's do. That's a good thing. Plus, there was a lot of comments from men who... We we need to get this right. Like, this is no normal guys that are saying this. 
Like, there's guys in the comment section of my tweet saying, Oh, man, I want a sucker tits. See the one that the fugged at the back? I want a sucker tits. So bad. You're not going to click into his profile and do that. Oh, that's a police officer that fucking... Well, maybe that's a bad example. That's a terrible <laughs> that's example. That's a terrible example, mate. It could possibly be a police officer. Aye. Maybe you should edit that. Cons- considering the track record, a police officer Aye. with women in no, the No, but you're show. not like, that's not the local geography teacher. You're like, that cunt looks like he's like, he's got one eye. <laughs> like, well, obviously there's something missing there, you know what I mean? Aye. Uh, can you edit that out about the police? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> no, in fact, don't edit it out. There's fuck fucking scumbags. Fuck them. Aye, so another thing at all, like I seen somebody tweet yesterday about International Women's Day and obviously you're entitled to be angry, I can understand that, but a woman tweeted like f- uh, female, female directors don't get a chance and all that stuff and someone basically handed her, her arse um, because recently, well in the last 20 years, like horror movies some of the major major horror horror popular movies have been directed by females right so it's like you're kind of i can understand why you're angry but it's, it's there's no truth there either do you know what i mean i <sighs> should we get into this um well I... for instance recently Candyman. Mm-hmm. the new Candyman was directed by a female right and it was an old kind of people of colour cast. Right. And it was, have you seen it? I haven't, no. It was amazing. Right. Like 10 out of 10, amazing. Everything about it was so amazing. So was the point of the original post that women don't get the same opportunities that men do within the film industry and people are pointing out that in the last sort of 10 years that that's not true. Yeah. I But historically, obviously, it is true. Yeah. You know? Aye, um, but it's not. It's not even like women are not getting chances. It's women are get. See, I feel like this is disrespectful towards women because women are getting chances, and not only are they getting chances, they're fucking a hundred times better than men. The Candyman film was perfect. Right. There's perf. It was perfection. There's no criticism there. It was the perfect horror film. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it was like a modern day updated version of the original film was shit hot. So I don't really see where the argument's coming from. I think it's just a feeling, isn't it? It's just like a feeling amongst people that um, that maybe women are still sort of second class citizens in society. Yeah. And I think in certain aspects, they're, they're, they're true. We've still got like the Windrush scandal in this country and there's still examples, but we're definitely pushing more towards equality and egalitarianism. And I think that for these types of like International Women's Day, for me, sh- could be an opportunity for people to celebrate women yeah. and celebrate the progress. But I suppose... Is that living in reality when uh, we still see quite a lot of sexism? I mean, we were talking about it with that Ukraine thing. There's still misogynists. There's still scum out there that are that think that we live in the sixties, the fifties, or the sixties. There's definitely a group of people that want to go back to that. That think, you know, let's take the power back. Yeah, there is no fucking going back. Like, yeah, um, I think that if you look at some of the statistics about female-run countries and their COVID response, just as an example was way more efficient and way better than what yep. it was for like the men and look at what's happening in ukraine mate that is men that are doing that that is toxic man and people are like what the fuck is toxic masculinity it's not even a thing we are witnessing <laughs> it that's that male violence is a form of toxic masculinity yeah like this guy's ego is off the fucking chain yeah and he's got a nuclear fucking arm uh-huh. like and this is what we're talking about when we talk about how misogynistic and fucking ignorant men who have power in the world then you know like that's not to say that i mean men are victims of this there's men dying even these ain't soldiers are getting into ukraine and going what the fuck like yeah so uh, you're seeing this on videos they're like laughing and shit or running out of petrol uh-huh. and like why are we here aye that's it so like aye more women please yeah like, like absolutely. new zealand uh-huh for sure mate um, even this country, we've got a female leader and she gets all sorts of 
misogynistic shit slung at her people like, I think she's a lesbian she's a secret lesbian because she's got fucking short hair yeah they call her wee nippy and oh Jimmy Cranky and yeah. just all this shit that gets slung but then when you call Boris Bojo people are like oh you can't say that and yeah. fuck you like he's a fucking prick like I, I hate I hate it because it's like I'm not exactly SMP do you know, I get similar feelings to when people are bad towards Catholics as well. I'm not a Catholic, but when people start talking shit about that, I get, it hurts me. Oh, oh mate, I'm not, you know, obviously I'm white, straight white male. Uh -huh. uh, BLM, I'm there, mate. Yeah. I'm there. I'm not, I'm not into this pish about like pure, oh, fucking taking the knee, it's all the shite and all this sort of stuff. Like, I'm there, man. I, yeah. I hear I hear the racism for people, even yeah. people that are run about me. Like I see it and hear it. It's still there, it's still present. We need to fucking fight it. Yeah. Um, you don't need to be the thing to be part of, you know, the cause. Yeah. Absolutely, mate. But I have noticed that with Nicola Sturgeon, it's like uh, she goes to her friend, no, she takes her mask down for two seconds. Fucking sacker. Sack Sturgeon. I'm like, well, he's Aye. Boris Johnson's gained 30 million contracts to a cunt that runs a pub Aye, like that's it mate just a just a double standard and yeah. hypocrisy mate how mate, long have we done uh, uh i know on five we'll need to wrap up mate we'll need to wrap up um sorry if we ended on a more serious note there we never really did we nah uh, nobody's listening anyway we can't feed mctassels <laughs> <laughs> he gets to the end of the podcast ah uh, he's just like what did he say something about Ukraine and tits what, what, what was that uh, I will wrap it up there mate thank you very much everyone this is episode 20 I just want to say a quick thank you to McTassels for sponsoring the podcast like I said if you're an, a follower and a listener of this podcast please like review and share spread the word it, it means a lot to us um, McTassels cover the cost of the studio but if you'd like to give me a wee bit of money, um, you can donate me a coffee. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And um, I see you next week, Paul. Please be dab. I'll probably be five stone plus five stone. Plus five stone dab. Uh, <laughs> ah! Ukraine!